Good morning, good morning. Welcome back to Tech Talk Live. Today we have an extra special guest, Stephanie Mitchell is with us. Hello, hi everyone. Yes, so Stephanie, we always wanna know where everybody's from. So I'm in Dayton, Wyoming at the base of the Bighorn Mountains. Where are you at? I am in Ottawa, Canada. So I'm Canadian, uh, originally from Toronto, moved around a lot in my life and now I'm back in Ottawa, which is the capital of Canada. Oh my goodness. This is what I love about social media is that even though we can't be there face to face, we can, you know, find each other online and be able to to talk and be like we're in a coffee shop together just enjoying. I know. It. I know it's so cool. Like when I talk with my clients, I have ones that are like all around the world, like sometimes in different areas of the United States. And I love hearing like the different accents and stuff. But even like people in Australia where, you know, you have to talk to them either early in the morning or late at night. And it's really nice to kind of get a peek into people's lives that are like living a totally different. They're in a totally yeah. different place and they've just like got something else going on, different time zones, cool, yeah. Absolutely, and actually that's why we do Tech Talk at so many different times, is this, this the times aren't always the times that I come up with, the times are what, with what's gonna be best for the mm -hmm. special guest that's on. So sometimes I'm live at six o'clock in the morning, like I was with Jessica. In oh my gosh. Australia, so that was her best time for her evening time. And then sometimes I'm live at two o'clock in the afternoon, 10 o'clock at night, like, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's like the life of like a professional <laughs> journalist or someone who's on TV. You know, you have to wake up super early or have to stay up late. That's so true. Except for I don't have all the makeup artists to cover up all of the you early look mornings. pretty professional. I have to say, I was just complimenting your hair before. You look great. Well, thank you very much. So Stephanie, it's such a delight to have you on today. So I, thank it was quite you. a few months ago I came across one of your blog posts and uh, I've uh, followed you since. Like, it's amazing what you do for our nail industry. Thank and so I'm excited to be able to share you with everybody today and um, and touch base a little bit more on marketing and branding and Facebook and Instagram and all the different ways that we can get together. However, we want to know where you began. How did you get started in the beauty industry? Yeah, that's a really good question. And probably for myself, like a lot of people, it's not like a straight path like I mean some people like for their whole lives they always knew what they wanted to do and then they followed it and it's great for me like my course is just like so many different things um so actually uh I grew up in Senegal in Africa my parents were missionaries and I kind of like got that passion for um like different countries and different cultures and that kind of thing so I went and taught English in China as soon as I graduated high school and then I, uh, I studied marketing in university. I worked in startups, so I worked in tech, um, always doing marketing, but like a totally different world from now. Like in the, you know, the tech world, it's all about like raising money and working on apps and really like kind of technical marketing too. Um, and then four years ago, I quit my job at a startup. I had a really good position, um, was the marketing director at a really cool company, um, but I decided to quit my job and move to Italy. Uh, because my boyfriend, long time boyfriend, but long distance was living in Italy. And so I finally decided to bridge the gap, quit my job, moved to Italy. Um, and I had like no idea what I was going to do professionally when I moved there. I moved to Rome. I spoke a bit of Italian, but like I was just totally jumping into a completely new context. And I learned the language. I kind of got my bearings. I started my own company. Um, that was four years ago. It was uh, it was different what I'm, from what I'm doing now. It was a startup for um, helping personal trainers and gyms uh, to do online marketing and e-commerce. Uh, so the fitness industry. And then um, about a year and a half ago, I got the idea to just, you know, do something completely different and really focus myself on marketing, which is what really what my passion is. Um, I, I love kind of like the psychology of marketing. I really love, um, you know, seeing a business grow because not necessarily just of your product, but because you're able to communicate your product really well to people. Um, so I wanted to help people to do their marketing. I always have had people coming up to me asking, you know, oh, how do you, how do I do Facebook ads? How do I um, make a really cool website? How do I communicate to people really well? And I was like, you know what? I should just do that full time. Like, it's just what I love to do. I love talking with people. I love helping people. Um, so I decided to focus on the beauty industry. Um, I have friends, you know, that have salons and I know that it's a huge industry and really growing. And I also felt like, you know, because I am a woman and because I think that, um, 
you know, when you're talking about an industry that you personally know, just because, you know, you grow up like being surrounded by, you know, you go into salons, you get your nails done. I felt like it was an industry that I already kind of knew pretty well from personal experience and also from my friends who were in that industry. So I thought, you know what, I, I know that the beauty industry is like kind of brick and mortars. Like it's, you know, you have your location, you have your clientele, but it's becoming so much more crucial, the online part of it. So having a really good online presence is what, what we're going to talk about today. Mm -hmm. um, and I saw that there was like a gap there. It's like everybody knows, everybody in the beauty industry knows how important marketing is, but you either don't necessarily have the knowledge to do it or even if you do know how to do it, you're out on the floor, you know, you're working, you don't have the time to do it. Um, so that was kind of like my journey from like moving all around the place, working marketing professionally, and then really deciding to help business owners with their online marketing. And that's exactly what I do. And I absolutely love it. Yes. Oh my goodness. So for those of you that are watching, um, you know, one of the ones that I kept resharing with from Stephanie was a blog post that she did about how to make light boxes and how to post. Oh yeah. Them. Yes. And you kind of showed the trial and error of like, this is what this looks like, but look how fabulous this can look. And so the time you mentioned time that is seems to be the biggest one. We'll get the know how and there's lots of, you know, people like you that we can reach out to and say, hey, mm -hmm. how do I do this? And it's easy to do. We could figure that out with the time that it takes to get it out there. Yes. And then make interaction in the post. So. I know this question comes up a lot, but people always wonder, is it better to like have a website, have a Facebook page or have an Instagram, or do you really need all of them to, to market your business? Um, do you mean that is having just a social media presence and not a website? Is that enough? Is that what you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, sorry. You do need a website. <laughs> I didn't answer that question very well. Yeah. You do need a website. Um, I, I understand that people who are just starting out and especially if they're just like a solo printer and it seems like Facebook and Instagram is just the easiest thing to do and people like doing it, you're used to doing it on a personal level. So it just seems a natural extension to get your own Facebook page and your own Instagram. And that's perfect. You need that. And we're going to talk more about social media after. But the truth is that you really do need a website too. And there's a few reasons for that. Um, first of all, website doesn't even have to be super complicated. I mean, I'm sure everyone's familiar with like Wix, um, Weebly, those kind of things. Even if you just have like a single web page, like it doesn't even have multiple pages. It just has a little bit about you, some of your work, your contact information to book an appointment, some of your reviews, um, you know, where you're located, even just like almost like a business card on one page. That's enough but it is so important for several reasons. First of all, um, to actually get found on the internet. So for search engine optimization on Google, they Google looks at your website. So you wanna be able to point traffic to that and get people going on there. If you have a Google My Business profile, in order to actually benefit from people finding you on Google Maps when they search like nail salons near me, um, you need a website to point people to. Um, also, the truth is, is that people do research before they book. And that's true now more than ever. You know, you want to be able to look at somebody's Instagram profile, see what some of their designs are. I do this too. So when I did that blog post, when I made the light box and like got my nails done, um, I definitely looked around at places near me because I didn't have one that I was regularly going to. And the first thing I did was look at their Instagram. But the second thing I did was go to their website. And if they didn't have a website, it would have concerned me in terms of like, oh, what's the level of professionality here? How serious are these people about their business? But it also gives you kind of all the information you need to know at one place. So you can look at who the people are. So you want to make sure to include information about yourself and pictures of yourself and kind of like your personal story. Um, so yeah, I, I would say it is crucial to have a website, even if it's just super simple for the reasons of search engine optimization. And then also just to have a place that people can kind of check you out and do more research. Yeah, because as we know, well, know that with Instagram and Facebook, everything can kind of get lost and you don't know who's really being able to see it as a mm -hmm. website. When they go to that, it's all about you and it's always there. And whatever topics you want to hit on is there. I, I did one about a year ago and now you guys know 
I'm a hands-on girl. I'm like nail tech girl. When it comes to the technical side of it, I need help. And I have reached out to my daughter who has helped me the most because she understands, you know, the newer technology. Yeah, that's awesome to have someone that can help you and your family. <laughs> yes, I've reached out to many, many people to help me out. And I created a website and I thought, okay, you know how they're like, if I can do it, I know you can do it. I am serious when I say, if I can do it, you guys can do it. And I ended up paying for one that later on I found out, oh, there's so many free ones out there. So you don't have to invest a lot, just like in yeah. Facebook and the websites, they are free. You can get free ones. And so it just comes down to time. You can't use the, the financial part as an excuse for that. Mm -hmm. What did you end up using for your website? WordPress. Okay. Yeah. And so you just like got a theme and just changed a few things on it and it was, yeah. Yeah. And I don't like it. And I, now that I understand it, I want to go in and revamp it. And actually I've reached out to quite a few people just recently again saying I need help. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> and I think that like, I, as for all things when it comes to marketing, but for your website too, it's a process. Like it doesn't need to be perfect at the beginning. Start with something super simple, just like a one page, like free Wix website or whatever. And then, you know, as you're growing your business and you feel like you wanna add more professionality or you wanna put more information, then you can do it. But like, you know, I said, I come from the startup world. There's something called an MVP, which is a minimum viable product, which is like whenever you're doing something in business, just make it minimum first get it working and then you'll figure out what you need to add to it later yeah absolutely that's great great advice and so you know it's always funny i have a story from like a year ago i i had contacted somebody to come on tech talk live and he hadn't heard you know who i was in the industry and stuff and so he goes well, you don't even have an instagram <laughs> and i was like I do, but I, I have like one picture on there that I had to turn into Nails Magazine a couple years ago. And boy, that one person made me think, why am I not just posting pictures on there? So I figured out how to use Instagram. And from there, it's made so many more contacts that I kept mm -hmm. thinking, I'm fine. Just master one thing and you're really good. But once you master that and your comfort level is there on the basics, like what you said, it is worth it to branch out because it's amazing how much more it's brought. Yeah, for sure. Like everything doesn't need to be perfect at the beginning. It's better to get it done and get it out there than for it to be perfect. And then yeah. just like one thing at a time, like I know marketing can seem really overwhelming, but just focus on the basics. Um, I mean, there's so many different aspects of it, but just like website, Instagram, and then just like go from there. Absolutely. Um, just out of curiosity, which one's your favorite one to use? I actually... Uh, for for in social media, you mean? Yeah, just for social media. I'm a big Facebook girl. I actually, I you know, Instagram is so important too. Um, but I think that I don't know. Maybe I don't know. I'm 30. I don't know whether that's like the age group or whatever. But I was just like brought up on Facebook, and so I I just love it for like news and um, obviously Facebook is really important for getting reviews too. So for me you know, when I talk to businesses and clients who ask, like, I know that I need to do social media. I know it's super important, but I don't really know how to do it or I don't know where to focus my efforts. Mm -hmm. um, Facebook is really important for kind of like the research aspect when people are looking at reviews for collecting reviews on there. Um, and we can talk more about reviews later. Um, but it's really good for reviews. It's really good for people to just kind of like see if any of their friends like your business and just kind of get an overview. And then Instagram's just really good for the branding part. So just keeping yourself top of mind on people when they follow you there. It's not necessarily like an instant sales thing, but it's just kind of like you constantly being in their mind. And so they're more likely to book an appointment with you or they're more likely to book an appointment more often just because they're thinking of you. Mm -hmm. I was told one time that the good way to explain the difference is Instagram is when you're looking through a magazine, you're scamming through the pictures. Mm -hmm. Facebook, you have to read the article. Yeah. And I was like, ah, I kind of yeah. like it. Yeah, that's, that's a good way. So, um, so Jay said that she wants to see the link to the video light box. So we'll definitely get the link. Yeah, shared. you know what I did also um, before this talk, because I was trying to be uber prepared. Um, I just like pulled up a picture on my phone of my light box so yeah. I can show you. And um, she showed step by step how she yeah, made this. And it was okay. not difficult. This is like at my dining room table. I 
Um, I got a cardboard box. I just covered it. And so just as a bit of context, my blog post was about how to take really good pictures of your nails for Instagram and for social media. Um, so I tried out all these different techniques. And one of the coolest techniques that I tried out was to make a light box. So like to get a cardboard box, um, there's a bunch of like tutorials online um, and just cover like cut out the sides and top of it, cover it in tissue paper and then put a lot of lights around it. And what it does is it just kind of like diffuses the light and it gets a really cool effect. Um, yeah. So you can see in this picture, um, I just I put lights all around it and then um, I just posed my nails inside of it. You can change the background color and stuff. And it only takes like 15, 20 minutes. But I think it's a really cool kind of fun project to to try out and then just to like get different types of nail pictures different from like the classic nail salon pose it gives you more options yes and you know it's always funny because you see on like the red carpets and stuff they have the light boxes there for the celebrities to mm -hmm. like walk their fingers down the red carpet and pose take a picture i mean that's <laughs> that's how big these light boxes have become yeah yeah it, it's a cool effect for sure so yeah we'll share the link to that blog post after so Jay's interested in knowing, do you make websites or do you recommend a place for, for people to create one? So do we, you help them along the yeah, steps? The yes. So we do. Um, so my marketing company is called Sunny Storm Marketing. And um, part of what I do is education. So blog posts, webinars, um, courses, that kind of thing um, to help you learn how to do marketing on your own. But then another side of it is for people who know that marketing is important, but don't necessarily have the time. Uh, we also do done for you marketing services. So one of the things we do is websites. Um, we do WordPress websites um, that are more like full blown and kind of like, however you want it customized, whatever, however that vision is that you have in mind for your website, we do that. Um, but we can also do like a more simple website for you if you just kind of like want like a simple Wix website or whatever. Um, we do all different sorts of it. So um, some of having a website is just like taking the time to do it. Another part of the having a website is knowing what's important to put on your website and kind of having that guidance. So that's what we do as well as we give you guidance as to, okay, these are the top three most important things you should have on your homepage. Um, this is kind of like what people do when they're on your website. So make sure to have this page instead of that one. And yeah, we, we provide not only the service of doing the website for you, but also providing you for advice on what actually to put on your website. And that's a nice part about working with a marketing group. Like what you have is one, you're personalized to that. Like we can contact you and say, I mm -hmm. need help with this. So it, you're approachable, you're reachable and you know how to explain things. Like I've read so many of your blogs and I said, one of the things that I really like about your blogs is that they're easy reading. I think you told me that you actually try to keep them to 15 minutes and like scammable, you know, like, uh, Sc scannable. Scroll. Yeah. 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 And so with that being said, it, it's true. I'm attracted to your, your type of blogging. You know what Thank you're doing. Thank you. <laughs> and then um, Gail wants to know if you have to pay for search engines. Oh, if you have to pay for search engines. Actually, um, well, it depends on what she means. So search engine optimization is something that you can do on your own and um, it, you don't have to pay for it. So it's not like Google ads where like people see your website and then you click for every per and then you pay for every person that clicks. Search engine optimization is something that it's just like good practices that you do for your website and the content that you create and even your social media. And the more of that kind of juice that you give to Google, so the more kind of things that you do that Google really likes, it'll kind of bo boost your ratings on where you show up. Um, on the front page when someone search for uh, nail salons or whatever it is. Um, so search engine optimization, you can do it yourself. And I do have a blog post about 24 things that you can do um, to help your website get to the top of Google. And again, that's why you need a website because you can't really get that really good like juice from Google unless you actually have a website. Um, so there are things that you can do yourself. And then if you want, uh, there's also like companies like mine that you can hire to help you get further up in the rankings on Google. Um, just like three things off the top of my head that I can think of um, to improve your search engine ranking as a nail salon is number one reviews. So um, really 
putting a focus on social reviews, whether that's on the Google My Business reviews or on Facebook or on Yelp, um, but really encouraging your clients to leave reviews, whether that's following up with them after an appointment or even just like having um, the person at your front desk mention it to them um, that it's important for them to leave a review, just kind of like making that a priority for your business because Google really does look at reviews when ranking people. Mm -hmm. um, another thing is, content. So if you have a website, just like keeping it fresh, putting small blog posts, um, my website personally, um, I have so many more people finding me through Google nowadays, just because they're searching for things like how to take good nail pictures for Instagram, and they end up on my blog. And the reason for that is just because I make it a habit to like, consistently be creating content. Um, and then another thing that you can do uh, for your website is just make sure that, well, there's a ton of different things, but another thing that you can do that's pretty easy is just make sure that your website looks good from a mobile phone. Um, so it doesn't just look good on a desktop, but from a mobile phone, because Google wants to make sure that websites are mobile optimized. And also if it's a bad experience, people will just go on your website from their phone and then they'll jump right off. And that looks yeah. bad for Google. And then also that it's fast. So just make sure that you don't have like tons of really heavy pictures. Um, just make sure that it loads fast. And uh, that's one more thing that you can do to boost your search engine rankings. That is great, great tips. I I learn from you every single time. I talk. <laughs> I'm always inspired every time I talk to you. That's good. That's what I aim for. Yay. Um, nothing's worse than a bad website. Ask for help if it's not your forte. And Eileen, I agree with you. I'm a good person. I can ask for help. And I will give you full reins when I ask for help because I want every bit of the knowledge, you know, that other people have because they don't have it. And I don't want that knowledge. I don't want to, you know, become an expert in that. Yeah. Utilize the people that are experts and want to do that. Yeah, it's, it's a question. And it's for all of us, like as business professionals, you have to decide what's worth um, the time to learn how to do it and what's worth just saying, okay, I'll find someone else to do it for me and they might do a better job. So, and don't you find too, that it takes, you need focus of what you want to promote on your website. So a lot of people are like, well, this is just my salon, but then they have no pictures of nails or these are all the nails, but then they don't have a picture of their salon or a storefront that somebody can kind of relate to, or they're just a blogger and there's no pictures. And yeah. just their Facebook pages. I see that a lot. So it's like, we have to focus on what we want to promote. So like for my website, it has, I have no nail pictures. I think actually now I do. It was all about the workshop. So I had a lot of videos mm -hmm. and people would understand how workshops would go. So do you have any tips on like what, obviously the most Googled is probably if they're looking for a nail salon, they're wanting to know what kind of nails, but mm -hmm. do you think that we need to offer, like put our prices on there too, put a picture of our salon, kind of give them an idea of what the ambiance of the salon would be or yes. is sales enough? Uh, for sure. So um, in terms of whether you should put like your menu and your pricing on there, mm -hmm. people have differing opinions. I personally, from my own experience, I know I'm way more likely to book into a place if I, or call them um, if I know what, you know, what the prices are, what the yeah. services are. So I would say, in my opinion, definitely put all that information on. Um, in terms of what actually to show on your website, make it as if, you know, anything, any kind of vibe that people would get walking into your nail salon, like off the street, if they didn't know anything about you and try to make that reflected on your website and try to make it as personal as possible. So definitely show pictures of what your place is like, not just like full pictures of like, a 180 degree shot, but also just like, you know, photos, like close ups of like cute things you have on your wall, or like, maybe, you know, just like small details that make people think like, Oh, this, you know, this place has its own vibe. And it's, you know, yeah. nothing worse than just using stock photography on your website, because it just looks so impersonal. And it really doesn't give people a good impression of what you are. Mm -hmm. And then another thing is just talk about yourself. So, I mean, this is one of the big things that I always talk about when it comes to marketing, whether that's on your website or on your social media, make it personal and make it about you. Because the truth is, is that there are so many other businesses out there. There's always lots of competition. And it's, I mean, a lot of it, it's so important what you do and what your, I mean, what your level of 
um, experiences and what kind of services you can provide, that's important. But the truth is, is that people will pick you because of you and because of your staff. Um, so really, really make your personality shine through on your website and on your social media. Um, show pictures, show videos, tell a story, just like a random story that may not even really have anything to do with nails. Um, but it really helps people to identify with you as a person. I mean, that's the first question that you asked me when we first started this talk is, you know, tell me about how you got into the industry. And it's a story that is not necessarily relevant to nails, but to me as a person. And when people can identify with you and kind of relate to you as a person, they're more likely to choose you as a business too. Absolutely. And you know, when it comes to whether you're using Instagram or Facebook or any of those, it also comes to the, the person has to picture themselves in your salon. Mm -hmm. Maybe the types of nails you do are all art and all they want is a simple French manicure. And they're yeah. like, well, do you just do French manicures? You know, because we think that we have to promote our biggest and best. And then sometimes it's just a picture of like your pedicure area. Like you said, something maybe on the wall to connect with mm -hmm. and a cup of coffee, just sitting there with nobody there and say, can you picture yourself right here? Here's my pedicure prices. I just did a pop-up live about a week ago in our group and I showed menus of how to be unique on your menus because sometimes we're scared to share our prices because we feel that people are going to compare apples to apples. Mm -hmm. So the marquee sitting out front saying full set $25, but your full sets are $45. But what it doesn't say is the description of what is entailed in that and what sets you apart. So mm -hmm. sometimes you can make up a name. So like instead of glitter toes or glitter gel toes, you could say rock star toes. And then people are like, well, what's rock star toes? And if you have yeah. a little description, they can't compare apples to apples. So when you do put your prices out there, I definitely think that you need to set yourself up a little bit and uh, take the time to be unique on your menu. Yeah, that's a great tip. I mean, the truth is, is that whatever industry you're in, if you just focus on price, it's not it's not the best differentiator because that's when you become a commodity and that's when it's like the race to the bottom in terms of how you can beat your competitors with like lower prices. But when you focus more attention on, um, you know, you as a person, your personal brand, um, your style, your qualities, that is what really makes the big differentiator. Yeah. Yeah, I always go back to this one milk ad and it was like it was actually a local person trying to compete with Walmart's prices on milk and uh, Walmart, to do. Walmart is usually the cheapest, right? Exactly. So what makes them want to come to you? So this marketer that was like a grocery store across the street kept lowering their prices to meet Walmart's prices. Well, then Walmart was like, this is a lost leader for us. We can lower ours. So here's 25 cents a gallon for milk. Oh Finally, this person, the grocery store person says, our milk is stored at, I forget, whatever temperature to keep your milk optimal. And, you know, bubble. And that's what one them more were, was describing why their milk was colder than the other one. Like, yeah, yeah. Put good. the focus, put the focus on something else for sure. Absolutely. So we just have lots of highs and hellos and all Hi of that. Hi, everyone. And, um, so Eileen, it says share that blog. We are. So we're going to put all of Stephanie's information in the comments here so we can definitely share not only your blogs, but get in touch with you so that we can do some more of the sunny side marketing. Yes, definitely. Yeah. So how'd you come up with the name? So um, my business name is Sunny Storm Marketing, and the reason that I called it that um, is because I really, you know, it's very easy to go generic. It's very easy to choose a name. Like I could choose a name like um, like Salon Marketing Corp or, you know, like uh, those kind of very descriptive names. And the reason that people choose them, I understand why, is because they seem safe. It's like, well, no one's going to criticize me and it's really easy to understand. Um, so if there's like one lesson that I could, that I could maybe share that I've learned from my own business when it comes to like naming and just the initial stages of branding is don't go for safe. Like don't go for what it seems like everyone else is doing. Go for something that means something to you and something that every time you hear it kind of makes you smile and it might not seem safe. And at first you might think like, Oh, people are going to be asking me like, what does this even mean? Yeah. Um, so sunny storm, I chose it because I really, liked the idea of kind of like the juxtaposition of like a sunny day and then like a storm. 
So I kind of thought of those two. I wanted a name that is kind of like evocative. So I chose two different words that seem totally different from each other and then put them together. And then I also like the idea of kind of like sunny is like a very positive thing. And, you know, I have a lot of positive associations with marketing. I love it. And I think that it makes such a big difference for people's businesses. And then storm, you could think like storm of activity. Uh, so yeah, that's, it's kind of like the thought process behind it. Most people that hear it don't really obviously know that, but I think that, you know, when you do your branding, it's important that it means something to you and more than just making sense that it kind of has like an emotion with it. Like yeah. words have emotions. So if you can choose something that means something to you and then like it evokes a strong emotion, it's really, really helpful when you're branding. I love it. And once again, it's about being unique, getting people's curiosity to be like, why did, why would they choose that? Yeah. Whether it's on our menus, like we were just talking about, or your salon name or whatever. Cause so it's so easy. And like you said, safe for us to just do, you know, nails by Amy marketing. Yes. By Amy. And, um, but that's the same as everybody else. So when you kind of kick it up a little bit and they're like, what, you know, sunny storm marketing. Why? Yeah, I love it. And I, I'm a person that asks questions. So the little things like that, I notice, and I'm like, I wonder what was their thought. <laughs> yeah, actually, you're the first person to ask me that, but I'm glad that you did because it gives me an excuse to talk about it. Yes, you should. And you know what, if we have come up with something that's very unique, and people aren't asking, that's kind of our one conversation starter that we can get into is be like, Oh my goodness. I started this marketing thing and I called it sunny storm. And, uh, and here's why talk about your uniquenesses, because if we always talk about what everybody else talks about and just hit directly into sales and buy me and, you know, purchase and book in with me, we forget that we have to make the connection first and the trust first. Yes. In fact, you and I were talking, I think it was yesterday in our pre-life. I always talk about we have to put any of our pages, whether it be our website, our Facebook mm -hmm. or whatever, as like a coffee shop. And you don't just walk up to somebody at a coffee shop and and go like this. Whoops. And, and stick your finger yeah. right in their face. So why in marketing do we just think by just posting that picture that that's enough? You have to engage in conversation. And you have to engage in conversation that immediately makes you unique. And so the first thing that you can do is, is when they they talk about you say, well, yeah, I have a marketing business, but you could say the name and then instantly people would be like, well, sunny storm marketing. Well, tell me more about that because instantly you've, you've engaged with them. And yeah, so yeah, always sure. remember that you've walked into this coffee shop. How do you start conversation with somebody? You Not, don't like this. <laughs> Not like this. Exactly. So I, I love that you said that too, um, because this is hilarious. Just like imagine, or like imagine if someone like walks into a coffee shop and has like a giant like diamond with them and they're holding it like this. <laughs> yes, exactly. um, so I, I kind of go into that into my blog post about um, uh, taking nail photos too, because the truth is, is that I feel like so many um nail techs are kind of so surrounded in the industry. And so a lot of times when they're taking pictures, it seems like they're almost taking them to impress other nail techs. Do you know what I mean? Like to get, and so when you do that, it kind of alienates you from the average person. I mean, there are people who are like super, super into manicures and they look at those details and they look at that really cool technique that maybe no one else is doing. But the truth is, is that you really want your pictures on Instagram and on Facebook to be relatable more than anything. And I, I mean, people will have different opinions about this, but I honestly think that there's nothing less relatable than people holding like a diamond like this. Like you want to make it more like a lifestyle shot. You want to make it look like, oh, these are nails that you can wear with this outfit. These are nails that you can show up to a meeting with and still look professional, but kind of like funky at the same time. And so how do you do that is you do more kind of lifestyle shots. So putting accessories and um, taking pictures with like the whole outfit to kind of show like, you know, these nails fit your style, making yeah. it more relatable to the average person that just really doesn't really care about that cool technique, but just wants nails that look, you know, neat and kind of like fit the same kind of style that maybe the nail tech has. So that's why I always go back to make it about yourself too, because people will identify with you and then they'll look up to you for like the next styles or like what kind of colors are cool this season, that kind of thing. Yes. 
Exactly that. Another thing that I did about six years ago is I did an entire uh, marketing thing. Our whole salon did it and it was called These Nails Work. And, and actually the clients ended up taking the pictures more than what we did. But we had pictures of them with what they actually did with their nails. So we did a before picture. This is what it looked like when they left the salon. Mm -hmm. Here's a during picture of them scraping off the outside of a boat or <laughs> them typing in their fingers yeah. on a typewriter and showing that these nails clean how these nails do dishes and they'd have pictures of like the bubbles all over across our nails and then we did That's an a great campaign came back in weeks later and uh, we put our price on it and you know what there are seven of us nail techs that boomed really quickly because of that type of marketing but That's once awesome. you have to be creative and in that case we really needed our clients to want to be a part of that and so we had to ask like is it okay we take a picture of you at work or would mm -hmm. you take a picture while you're doing dishes or whatever but you know what it was unique and it was another thing that was free. We didn't have to pay a professional photographer to come in and do it, but it was, it was probably our best way of marketing. I can That's say that. That's awesome. That's so cool. Yeah. I could totally see myself like going, like going on your Instagram and choosing you because I see like the real women who are wearing these nails and it's not just like close ups. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly that. Um, <laughs> Eileen says, I initially thought that you lifted out of the storm when it came to your name. That you lifted out of the storm. Oh, out of the storm. And cool. you That's really me. neat. Okay. Yeah, I could see that too. Well, I, I wouldn't say no to that, like as an interpretation <laughs> of what the name means. That's good. Thanks, Eileen. <laughs> So one of the things that I really want to touch base on today is about branding because we can have the websites. A lot of us already do. Mm -hmm. We already have the Facebook. We have the Instagram. We've, we found out how to schedule posts. We found out how to use additional apps to post and all of these things for us. Yeah. But if you're not branded properly and branding goes into a few different categories like color, yeah. color theme branding, um, themes. And so what tips and ideas can you help us with branding? I love that question. Um, I love branding. And when I talk about branding, I usually go into two different sides of it. So one side is personal branding. So that's like who you are to your clientele when they're not actually at your salon. So what do they think of you when they're not paying you? And do they even think of you at all? And so there's that whole side to it. And then there's the other side, which is the visual branding part. So like the visual identity and those things definitely intersect. Um, but when it comes to visual identity and visual branding, um, I think that the first thing that people think about is logo and logo is super important. Um, and then the second one that they think about is color. And so a lot of times what people do is they think, okay, I'm starting a new business. I know I need a logo. And then they just think, okay, what, what kind of style is popular right now? And they just kind of go for it and get that logo done. And then they think, oh, I really like bright pink. So I'm going to make everything pink. And that's, I mean, it's better that you're doing that than not caring about your logo and not caring about having a color. But the truth is, is that the best branding that you can do comes from your own personality, your own passions, and then it helps you to connect with your ideal audience because of the way that you've done your branding. And if you do it right, you know, if you choose a color palette that's really meaningful, really unique, and then helps people to identify with you, you can have one of those moments where people see your color, almost like the Tiffany's like Robin's egg blue, and they're like, oh my gosh, you know, that's nails by Sarah or whatever. Um, so the thing, the way that I talk about branding is um, visual branding is your logo, your color palette, uh, your font palette, and then kind of like your design language. So how you design your graphics and that kind of thing. Um, the first step to having a really strong visual identity is to understand your own personality. So understand your own personality and then what kind of personality you want your business to have. Um, so a lot of thing, a lot of times in the beauty industry, a lot of people think like, oh, I want my business to be feminine. Um, so they choose kind of like light pink and white and like flowers. And I understand that it's very tempting because you're thinking about beauty, right? But the truth is, is that the best visual identities are the ones that are really unique. Mm -hmm. So if you can think about what kind of personality traits you want your business to have, whether that's like edgy 
or modern or, um, you know, maybe kind of like uh, simple and geometric, or if you want it to be like a little bit like bold and kind of like badass or there's so many different options other than feminine that you can choose. Mm -hmm. And the best personality traits are the ones that reflect you as a person. Um, so just think really hard about kind of what that attitude is or what that style is. So another another example I give in the beauty industry is um, Moroccan oil, which is a hair hair product. Yes. I'm sure we're all familiar with it. And they chose kind of like that really luxury, like luxury and kind of beaches, like almost think of like someone who's got like an amazing tan and they're lying on a beach somewhere tropical. So they, they chose gold and kind of like aqua blue as their colors. And those colors evoke that kind of, luxury and relaxed beachy lifestyle and so whatever that you know personality trait is you have to choose a color palette that reflects that um and then same thing goes for fonts like i'm looking behind you right there you have perfect 10 so i'm just like yes oh. <laughs> i was just looking at fonts and you know fonts mm -hmm. evoke a lot of emotion and personality as well and it's just people kind of take it for granted because fonts are everywhere, right? Like wherever, when you type on a Word document, you have like Times New Roman and on Facebook, you have like uh, Arial or whatever that font is. Um, so, but actually fonts can make a huge difference. So if you think about like a really bold, like uppercase, like thick font would, would give you kind of the impression of like, yeah, a really bold and kind of like extreme way of saying something whereas if you have a more like kind of flowy font like the perfect 10 and it's a little bit loopy it gives you kind of more the impression of um, class and kind of understated that kind of thing so choosing your colors and your fonts that evoke that personality is really important and then obviously having a logo that reflects those things as well is yes is really oh go ahead so Oh, no. And then I was just going to say the next thing is just expressing those everywhere and staying consistent with them. It's really tempting to kind of like when you're posting something on Instagram or if you have to make a graphic or update your website, just go with whatever colors come easy. But the best thing that you can do is choose them and stick with them. And, you know, if you choose ones that are meaningful, you won't get sick of them. So you will want to continue using them. And just remember that every time you use them, they get stronger and stronger because people associate them with you. Yes. One thing that I learned in, um, so I've taken so many marketing classes because I'm like you, I like the psychology side yeah, of it. Like, yes. How do they do this? What can I do to, to make this better? And um, and it's actually one of my favorite workshops to teach because there's so many aha moments in it for people. But here's what I find. They either go, oh my gosh, I need to change everything. And they've already been branded. It's like they don't realize that people know them for that mm -hmm. or that color or whatever. And that's not always the best thing to do. Sometimes what you do is you change maybe the color gradually into something else, or you change the color but not the font. And so there's many different ways out there to get yourself new and updated and stuff. So yeah. you'll notice that if you walk into um, Oh, I always use coffee shops just because they're easy and relatable. But if you walk into a coffee shop, you don't go in there one day and everything's absolutely different. Mm -hmm. They Imagine if Starbucks like turned blue all of a sudden. That would be such a shock. Yeah, we would be like, what's wrong? They must have changed ownerships. They must yeah. have. Yeah, exactly. We don't see it as like we might think that it's cool, but it's amazing. Well, why did they change their logo? Mm -hmm. and, and what they're doing is just trying to rebrand themselves. But it's I do find that you either if you've not already been consistent in getting your marketing out there with your brand you can change everything completely and start fresh if not you're going to have to transition yourself through that mm -hmm. yeah the best kind of rebrandings are ones where you can kind of have a throwback to your old style so like kind of a nod to what you were doing before either that with your logo that's just like more modernized or you know with your colors keep one of your colors but then just find a palette that complements them and just keep using it consistently Exactly. Like if Pepsi or Coke decided they were going to totally change out their font. I mean, we know their font no matter what color it is. And then we know their colors, you know. So, yeah, if they change those out, although that's funny because they always go back to retro. So that's kind of fun. to. Yes. To yeah. Um, so um, Becky says, my personal style is grunge, goth, modern, luxury, girly. How could I incorporate those into my logo without scaring potential clients? <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's a really good combination. So grunge, 
goth, girly, modern, and luxury. I'm a, I keep going to like black and whites. Do something black and white, and then you can change the background or something to whatever mood you're in. <laughs> yeah. What do you so, think? So what I would say is like, well, it's really hard to give um, – give advice for what your logo should look like or what your color should look like on the fly because it is kind of like a really personal and complex thing. But the best thing that I could do, who was it, Becky, that asked that question? Um, Becky, yes. Becky. So what I would do is um, go on Pinterest and make a mood board, first of all, because having those kind of ideas in mind of what grunge looks like to you what goth looks like to you and kind of how to make that also girly and luxury at the same time that's complicated so the best thing to do and i do this all the time with new projects is create a private board on pinterest and just start pinning images that mean something to you so that could even just be if you're talking about grunge and goth it could just be like style like people's clothing um, if you're talking about girly, it could be like certain color palettes that you like that are feminine, but also kind of edgy and gothy at the same time. It could be anything. It could even just be nature scenes. But the best thing that you can do is kind of like start getting it in your head. Okay, what does grunge actually mean to me? What does modern really mean to me? Maybe start pinning logos that you really like. And then after you start doing that, you'll start noticing kind of patterns of what you really like and what kind of you you don't like. And I think that that makes it so much easier once you start noticing patterns of what you're attracted to, then you can start really defining what that means. And I think also the fact that Becky's chosen kind of personality profiles that don't necessarily seem to go together at first, but you can actually imagine how one person, like a personality could fit all those characteristics because people are complicated, right? Yeah. I think it's really cool that she's thought about things that seem opposite, but if you can find a way in the middle to kind of put those all together into like a logo and a color palette, that's when you know you've got something like pretty unique and cool. That is excellent, excellent advice. Thank you for sharing that. And and obviously everybody's agreeing as well. It's like, oh my gosh, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Good, um, yeah, Pinterest is awesome for those kind of things. Yes, oh my gosh, I can't even start with how many boards I have. <laughs> Um, I'm on there all the time. In fact, I try to go to Pinterest as my escape from always looking at Facebook and nails and Instagram, mm -hmm. but I still find that that's exactly what I'm doing is getting on there and looking for inspiration for my next nail art. Or whatever. Yeah, for sure. So Marcy says, I've learned a lot from design classes that we should mm -hmm. stick to like three colors only. And she wants to know if that's true. Is that still kind of what we should be doing? Um, so uh, it was Marcy that asked the question. So um, Marcy, the fact that you went to design class is awesome because obviously, you know, like when you're in an artistic and creative profession, it's really useful. And then also um, when doing your branding, it, it comes so much in handy. Um, so that's awesome. I, when it comes to color palettes, I personally use three colors. So I use a color that's almost like this shirt actually. And then I use a teal color and I use like a really dark gray. And the reason for that is that um, when I first started out, I noticed that a lot of marketing companies that were kind of beauty focused were using those really kind of like light pastel color palettes. So I wanted something that was kind of forceful, like my own name, like Sunny Storm, like very bright and you know very bold and very different so i chose three colors um i usually recommend between three and five um sometimes what you can do is just start with two colors so i could just start with like my bright pink and my teal and then your other colors if you wanted to could just be variations of those so like a slightly lighter shade of pink or a slightly lighter shade of teal and so they kind of complement each other um i think three colors is great yeah, I agree with you on that. I I was thinking, gosh, years ago I had um, it was the font was called Harrington, so a tiny bit of scroll, but it was very easily readable, and it was great for ads because it wasn't as scrolled as what I have now, so it's easy to read. But I did everything in rainbow because I could not pick a color. <laughs> well, that's its own thing. It's it for all these colors. And yeah, rainbow is its own. I'm trying to think of like any companies that use rainbow. Well, Google. I mean, Google on their logo, they have like yellow, green, blue, red. And I think they're supposed to talk. I think the reason for that is that they're trying to show that their brand isn't just singular. It's like whatever you want, Google's there for you. So, I mean, different color sets, even if it's a rainbow, can say different things about your business. 
So Anita wants to know, like, what's a good teaser for something new? Like, what could we advertise as just a teaser that really pulls people in? A teaser that pulls people in. So I'm thinking when you're talking about advertising, so I'm thinking of something like Facebook ads or like something that you post on Facebook. And um, one thing that I've been doing with my Facebook ad clients, so I do Facebook ads coaching. And um, one thing that we've started to do is like video tours. So um, just like a 60 second um, video and you can even like chop it up and like speed it up in, in different sections, but just kind of like, take your phone, go through the front door and like walk around, show the different stations, like get your staff members to say hi. Um, it doesn't even need, you don't even really need to show like the nails that much, but mm -hmm. getting people interested again in like who you are, I think is enough of a teaser. And if they, if you seem really personable, I think it's enough of a teaser to get people to go like, oh, this place looks really friendly. Let me go to their website. Let me go to their Instagram and check out their work. So getting people to come in for an appointment is like, we always talk about in the marketing world, like funnels. So you start with like awareness, interest, desire, and action. Um, and that means that first of all, people have to know who you are, but then they ha you have to kind of pique their interest. And that doesn't mean that they're necessarily ready to book an appointment yet, but something about you or your business has kind of like gotten their attention. A lot of times that's expressing your really fun personality. And then they're like, then you get their interest. And so they go on your Instagram and they look at your work. Um, and then the desire comes with like, okay, now I want to book an appointment. Yes, absolutely. And you know, isn't it amazing too, that we are a want industry. People just want their nails done, but how many of us have created as a need for the client, the client, feels that they need this without their nails it is like life or death. And so um, it's interesting how you can create something as a want and turn it into a need. And you don't even realize that you did that, but it's because you connected with them on so many levels. Mm -hmm, definitely. You know, we were talking about branding earlier and uh, years ago, I was a master tech for a company. And uh, we always talked about scent branding. And so there's so many ways that you can brand yourself. So in the salon, if you do a lots of acrylics, you get recognized for that scent. But there's ways to overpower that. And uh, like one of them you could do is when my clients first sit down and I spray them with the hand sanitizer, this is peach scented. But at the very end, what I spray them is almond scented. And so despite whatever smell was in the salon, what they came in and first scent and then what they left with is what they remember. And oh so- Oh my gosh, that's so cool. I never thought of oh, that. I could talk forever about branding yourself within the salon. You're the specialist that can help us go to the next level outside the salon to get them in. And so when it came to branding yourself that, with the scent and using, um, oh, what do they call it? The, with the five sensory. So you have a smell, the look. So you've talked about the look already. So your mm -hmm. website is also going to reflect what it's like in the salon. We've talked about, um, you know, like pricing and the business side of it. But the fun side of it for me is branding yourself with the scent. And it's amazing when I ran out of the almond scent spray that I use at the end, which is an oil. They're like, you don't have that. Like every time I think of nourishing <laughs> cherry, I think about you because nourishing cherries are set in an almond. Wow. Egg. And every time they smell almonds, it's a, a positive sign that they think of me and anytime they smell citrus. And so it's interesting how you can brand yourself in so many different ways that you don't even realize that. That is so cool. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's so many studies that show that scent is the sense that um, is most strongly associated with memory. And so I'm sure we all have like one of those moments where you walk past, like sometimes I smell something and I think of like, Las Vegas, because in the casinos there, I think they do the same thing is like they pump a lot of like scent into the casinos also like cover the smell of like everyone smoking, I think, but yeah. like they just like have really strong scents there. And it's like, wow, like every time I smell something, I think of like a casino in Las Vegas or like, uh, for example, like Lush and Aveda are two Oh yeah. Businesses in the beauty industry that like when you walk past their store in a mall, even if you don't see the store, you're like, oh my gosh, where's Lush or like where's Aveda? And they have very distinctive smells. Absolutely. So there's so many ways, obviously, that we could talk forever on marketing and branding and all of that. Um, it's almost been an hour, like five minutes. Oh, wow. 
And I don't even know that we talked about all the topics you wanted to talk about. So do you have anything there that you really wanted to bring up? Um, well, let's see. I did write down a few notes. So we talked about taking photos, nail photos for Instagram. Uh, we talked about personal branding. So the importance of um, making, uh, deciding who you want to be to your clients, even when they're not in your salon. So, um, you know, what's your expertise, what kind of guidance or inspiration you can provide to them. Um, and so part of the way, and so actually there's something that we didn't talk about yet is that personal branding and kind of like who you want to be to people when they're not in your salon, a huge part of that is social media. So like communicating that to people, like giving advice about uh, nail care or even just like beauty skin, you know, whatever it is that you think that is important to your clients, even if it's not directly related to mm -hmm. your services. Um, so part of that is, you know, providing really great value and content on social media, but a huge part of that is email marketing. And that's one thing that we didn't talk about today, but it's like my number one marketing. Like if there's one thing that I could say that people probably don't give enough attention to that they really should is email marketing. And for and, me, that's the hardest. So yeah, yeah. So, okay. So I know we don't have a ton of time left, but first I'll just say email marketing is so, so, so relevant to marketing in 2018 more so than ever. And I think that like with the rise of social media with Instagram and Facebook, people kind of got the impression that email's dead. Um, but the truth is, is that it's more alive than ever. And it's so such an important way to connect with people. Um, so let's talk about numbers. For example, on Instagram, it's shown that the average reach for people is 10%. So only 10% of your followers will actually see your posts. And that doesn't mean that they're necessarily interacting with them. That doesn't mean that like they're right. clicking read more and like they're looking very carefully at it. It just means that they scrolled past it. And the same with Facebook, it's like 6%. So I'm sure everybody's seen that like Facebook posts are getting less and less reach. Um, Email marketing, on the other hand, the average open rate for an email is 22% and that can go much higher. So when I send out emails, um, I've got a pretty big email list and it's about usually between like 35 and 45% of people open my emails. And that's massive compared to social media. And you're not just talking about people scrolling past, you're talking about people that are opening up an email and are thinking, okay, Stephanie sent this or okay, Amy sent this. They're reading your content. They're clicking the links in the email. Um, and it is the number one way to brand yourself, like to get your personal brand out there. So a lot of times what people do is, you know, they come in for an appointment as a new client and either you never hear from that salon again until you're ready to book your next appointment, then you call them or you, they ask for your email address and they start spamming you with promotional offers. Like, you know, whenever it's like, they have a low period, they need more clients to come in or, um, you know, if they have a special going on or whatever. And people hate getting spammed in their email. And so they'll just unsubscribe or they'll just ignore you. But the best thing that you can do is create really good content in email and then send it out once a month. And it's not sales content. It's like, um, you know, he, inspirational. So like, here are like my fav top five favorite uh, client, you know, work that I did. So you can show some pictures. Um, you can even create a theme. It's like, here's my like unicorn or like rainbow nail art of the month. Then you can um, create like an informational piece, like educational. Um, so this is give people a reason to click in and provide them with that information. Like, here's my top like nail care tips of the month. Talk about yourself. Talk about your family, what's happening in your business. Show them pictures of your dogs or show them like pictures behind the scenes of what's happening in your salon. Give people a reason to open and to interact with it. And they will, if you're consistently like at least once a month sending out those emails, they'll get in the habit of opening them, reading them. They'll feel more of a connection with you. And then, you know, they're more likely to book in more often. And so it does result in sales and, you know, clients coming in and more revenue as well. Um, but more than that, it's just like keeping yourself top of mind. And so if there's one thing that I would say that we didn't touch on that I think is really, really important is email marketing. Yes. And so to help branch out into that, because how it's not even just the clients that are sitting in front of you saying, hey, can I have your email address? I want to send you on your birthday or something like that, send you mm -hmm. something. 
And sometimes people don't want to share that because they're like, I don't, I already come see you every two to three weeks. Why do you want to send me more? You know? So what you can say is, Hey, I have, um, 10 things that you can do at home to care for your nails. Like give them something free that they feel mm -hmm. no obligation to that creates an interaction. And you can say, are you, you know, the interaction could be like, um, are you biting your nails? Do you really know what happens to your teeth when you do that? Like totally make it something different. You're like, Oh, I've always thought about the germs or whatever, but I never really thought about the damage. Yeah. And then have like a doctor or a dentist put in like, these are the top three things that happen to your teeth when you're a nail biter or your gums. And then, you know, and give them information and build that trust up. So there's ways of getting em email addresses out there and giving them the content without it always having to be salesy, like what you mentioned. Yeah, for sure. Like that's, that's exactly what I do in my business. I mean, people are so careful with their email addresses. I mean, how many times do you go into a store and they say, can I get your email address? And you say, no, because you know, they're just going to send you promotions, right? Yeah. So um, that's what I do for my business is um, people download my ebooks, people download like PDFs that go along with a blog post. And so I'm always providing them value from the beginning, I give them a reason to join my mailing list. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then they know that from now on, I'm just going to be providing useful content and not like salesy things. So yes. I think that yeah, being able to give them something, whether that's like 10 tips or whatever it is, um, collecting email addresses from, you know, both your salon location and then from your website as well as you can also do that too. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, so yeah, people are saying they use email for confirmation of their, the nail appointments mm -hmm. in the salon. And that's another great way of be, be, building up your email list and stuff like that. Yeah, um, for sure. And then most, I mean, most booking software, you can, they allow you to do follow up emails as well. So that's when you can also like ask for a review, maybe show some examples in that email of like really good reviews that you've gotten that will encourage them to leave you a review as well. Yeah, absolutely. So somebody says on here, thank you, Stephanie, for the wonderful advice on email marketing. Everyone keeps telling me my social media and website, which I have, but it's not really helpful. And so she thanks you for, for doing that. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I'm like totally an evangelist for email marketing. It's like totally changed my business. I look at it completely different. Like for my other business, I used to like just whenever I had something to sell or promote, I would send out weekly emails and people hate it. <laughs> and I can just tell you, and it, it took me so long to clue in that just people don't want to get those kind of emails. And I was like, email marketing doesn't work. But the truth is, is that I was just sending the wrong kind of content. So I was having like 10% of people open my emails. And now I have like regularly 40% of my email list, like opens and clicks and reads. And so it makes a huge difference. Very, very nice. So we're not done with you yet. We <laughs> Day for this, but we can um, in the comments. We're obviously going to put in all the links to get a hold of Stephanie. But I'm holding a, another workshop called Get Used, Get Branded. And the last time I did it, I think it was in December or January. And it's how to get started through the Facebook side of it uh, because that's what I more know. So I'm not going to teach you something that I don't understand, you know, completely. And so Stephanie has agreed to come on and be a special um, guest and a helper with that um, with that workshop. And so. Um, there's many, many ways that we can tap into Stephanie's brain so that we can get to the next level of our marketing. And the biggest thing that you have to do, though, is set yourself a goal. I'm going to have this done by this day, because if not, we will always push it off. And it's like, well, I got a couple people. I'm good. No, nope. you're going to have to dive in and take a workshop, get a hold of her, set up a time frame and say, I need this done by this date. Mm -hmm. And you can just make it happen. And uh, it's not hard. It just takes time. Yeah, yes. And so for anyone out there that's like watching the live video or if you're watching a replay, um, if you, you know, feel like you want help with your marketing and you feel like you want to put that, you know, get somebody else's help with that, we can help whether it's social media or email or websites or whatever. Um, but again, a huge part of my business and my passion is just helping people and helping them to learn. So just teaching. So if you want to check out my blogs, I've got lots and lots of information um, about pretty much anything that you want to learn on how to do online marketing, how to brand yourself, that kind of thing. Um, and then lastly, I have two webinars. We were chatting about that yesterday, Amy. Um, I have two free webinars um, coming up that you can um, get a seat at for this week or next week. One of them is all about branding. 
So it's like really in depth about how to create a really unique visual brand, um, your colors, your fonts, your designs, et cetera. And then the other one is about Instagram. So about how to, first of all, like posting content that people love, but also about how to do hashtag research, how to kind of curate your personal brand on there, how to, um, you know, do research into what people actually want to see. So those are two webinars. Uh, you can sign up for them. They're free and so we'll put the links in. Perfect. So we can go to the link, give you the email address. Cause I know that you, like for me, your stuff comes through. I, that's where I find you is through my email. Yes. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. Stephanie, your mind is, um, I love tapping into your mind. It's, <laughs> Thank you. It's, like it's explosive because one, I love the marketing side of it. So I connect with it very well. Thank you for sharing all Thank of this you. knowledge. You've given us so much great knowledge. Um, and I look forward to continuing to work with you a lot more in the future. Yeah, me too. It's been awesome. So thank you guys so much. Thank you, Amy. And then thanks to everyone for watching. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you. All right. You guys know that in Tech Talk Live, we um, I post them in the events of what's coming up next. Um, I don't have my calendar in front of me to uh, kind of share with you who's coming up next week or not. But um, and then in the events, you can still go to do the calendar and go to the past events. So, for instance, what is, what's, what's going to happen today? I get done with this. I download it. I put it on our YouTube page, which is just under my name, Amy Masters. All the tech talks are on there. And then in the event itself, I will post the link of today's live. So you can always easily go back and refer to it whenever you need to. Um, if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to private message any of us admin because we are here to help you as well as Stephanie get to the next level easily find this education when we are ready to absorb it and uh, and let's grow let's do this so thank you again Stephanie I appreciate you thank, thank you, you. Bye. thanks appreciate everyone bye-bye